Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Chia video. This one I felt I needed to make as soon as possible, still took a few days, but hey, uh, because there's a lot of advice going around and most people don't really know what they're talking about. Let me explain. Okay, sit down because I need to explain a few things before I tell you my recommendations for NVMe drives to use as a plot temporary drive for Chia. I am going to stomp pretty much on the recommended drives you've seen out there while doing so. That might be a bit controversial, but hear me out. To explain very quickly, with Chia you form crypto, and you do this by for forming something called a plot. These plots, however, do take a little bit of work at first to generate them. After that, they just rest on your hard disk until asked for, and even then, don't require much performance. To speed up plotting to the maximum your hardware is capable of, you're going to want several NVMe SSD drives. If we're taking the build we did in the previous episode as an example, it would make no sense in building that machine, but not giving it the I.O. performance to match the other specifications. Otherwise, that very powerful CPU is mainly going to sit idle, basically wasting the investment you put into it. In this video, we're only going to be discussing consumer market NVMe drives, which most people are buying. Enterprise SSDs are a bit different in how they operate. They would generally be a good choice for Chia temp plot storage, but as said, not in this video. Okay, so you want or need speed and a lot of it. As I said in the previous video, we're going to be doing 10 to 12 plots at the same time. Now, there isn't really a defined speed, like each plot needs 500 megabytes a second. So we just don't want our storage to be the bottleneck for our CPU. If our plot takes two hours longer because our storage was slow, that means less plots in 24 hours. And well, since there isn't a defined thing or speed you need, I did most of this by doing my own measurements. Now, two examples of much recommended NVMe drives are the Corsair MP600 and the Seagate Firecuda 520. Both fine drives for desktop usage, but not really very good for generating Chia plots. Actually, some of the worst you can get in my opinion. But hold on. Let me explain. The reason for this is, as I mentioned, speed. Although both are NVMe times 4 Gen 4 drives, and while they are fast for desktop workloads, they will not be for Chia workloads. The reason for this is because both drives use TLC NAND cells, which inherently aren't very fast or good at writing. To solve or work around that issue for desktop usage, each TLC-equipped NVB drive uses something called an SLC cache. Basically, they use a part of the NAND flash memory in single-cell mode instead of triple-cell mode, SLC and TLC, making it very fast to write to. But there is only a little bit of that type of space available for that. Now, for desktop usage, this is all perfectly fine. You rarely write more than 50 gigabytes in one go, and then the drive gets a bit of rest and during that rest period, it can perform its background household processes and move data around and clean everything up. And well, there lies the problem. A drive that has 5000 megabytes per second on the box can become slower than 500 megabytes a second when running a Chia workload. Let's take the two SSDs I just mentioned as examples and take a look at some graphs. First, there is Tom's hardware. Looking at this graph, we see the Corsair Force MP600 one terabyte in black and the Seagate Firecuda 520 1TB in red. Both are example drives. And you can immediately see what I was talking about. Both drives start out great at 5000 megabytes a second, but when you continue writing the drive past about 100 gigabytes or so, the performance plummets through the floor to a paltry 500 megabytes a second. And these graphs are for full sequential transfers. If we add more random I.O. into the mix, it's likely going to be even worse. I know this is going against a lot that is being said online, but the graph is right there. Plotting Chia, you are going to be writing about 1.6 terabyte per plot to this SSD. 
And then on top of that, we're going to run multiple of those at the same time. Well, as you're probably starting to get right now, we're going to write through that 100 gigabyte buffer of both these drives pretty quickly. And we're basically going to give it zero time to recover because we are nicely staggering our plots. So once you start plotting, performance will basically never recover until you give the drive some rest. But you're not going to give the drive some rest because you're plotting 24 hours a day. Okay, but maybe this review from Tom's Hardware is just bogus. Sure, maybe, maybe they didn't like the brands. Let's take a look at the same test from Tech Power Up from the MP600 1TB. Ah, well, it's basically the same behavior. It drops down to about one gigabyte a second, and then if you continue to write for it, it settles around 500 megabytes a second again. And as I mentioned, this is just for sequential transfers. Doing anything random will likely make it much worse. Okay, hopefully that shows why these drives, in my opinion, are quite bad to use for TIA plotting temp storage. The performance on the box will not be achieved, not even close to it. Most of these types of drives will fall down to about 500 megabytes a second, as we've just seen. But I know what you're thinking. But what about the TBW? That's why we selected all these drives, because they have a great write endurance. We're getting to that. But first, let's see some other consumer drives that can deliver. Specifically, I'm going to talk about my recommendations, the Samsung 970 Pro 1TB and the Samsung 980 Pro 1TB. These both have great write characteristics, and each of those will easily end up four times as fast as the MP600 or the Fire CUDA drive. First, taking a look at the 970 Pro 1 terabyte with the same image we used for the MP600 and Fire CUDA, we see the green line of the 970 Pro 1 terabyte can basically sustain a write throughput of 2500 megabytes a second for the whole SSD. This is because the 970 Pro 1 terabyte still uses MLC NAND instead of TLC NAND, so it doesn't need those buffer areas and stuff like that. Remember that for a bit later. You want a good Gen 4 drive? Well, then the 980 Pro 1 terabyte, again, taking a look at a tech power-up graph, we see that it has a SLC write buffer because it's a TLC NAND cell SSD. But even at its worst, we're still seeing at least two gigabytes per second, which is four times as fast still as the MP600 or the Fire CUDA drive. Okay, so enough about speed. That much is obvious now. What about TBW though? The Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte only has a TBW or terabytes written of 600 terabytes. The MP600 1 terabyte has 1800 terabytes written and the Fire CUDA 512 terabyte of uh, Fire CUDA 521 terabyte also has around 1800 terabytes written. That means we can write three times as many plots on these drives than the Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte, and that means the Samsung is a horrible value for money. Or does it? So this is a bit of a yes, but no situation. And where most guys I've seen online show they don't really understand how SSDs work. I get that from a first glance, it seems like the 980 Pro would burn out much quicker than the other two. But that's where the TBW figure is very unreliable. Let's dig a little bit deeper. So each of these mentioned drives have TLC NAND cells, and each of them is about the same size, about one terabyte. It's not like Corsair and Seagate are using three times as many NAND chips on their NVMe drives, or that they have magical triple endurance TLC cells. No, they all use the same cells, often even from the same manufacturer. But there are no set rules for calculating TBW in the consumer market. The value is calculated using something called a write amplification factor. In very much simplified terms, this means the following. A NAND cell is a certain size. Often now they are 16 kilobytes. If your host then writes four kilobytes to the SSD, the SSD will have to modify or basically rewrite the whole 16 kilobyte cell. Thus, this has a write amplification factor of four. Since you wrote four kilobyte, but it's using up a write of a 16 kilobyte NAND cell. Again, this is very much simplified. 
And there is much more going on with trim and garbage collection, uh, etc. But for the explanation, that isn't too important. The good thing of this story is that the Chia plotter process seems to mostly write 64K blocks, making it much more efficient than, for instance, the 4K or kilobyte manipulation I just showed you as an example, giving it a very low write amplification factor. And maybe it's starting to dawn on you already. Most TBW figures manufacturers specify don't say how they were calculated. Again, it's not like those Corsair or Seagate SSDs will have magic triple endured magic, triple endured memory. It's my belief Samsung is very conservative in its rating, limiting warranting to 600 terabyte written, so that even if you hit the drive with lots of four kilobyte or smaller, so high write amplification factor uh, writes, the drive won't crap out earlier than the 600 terabyte written stated on the box. While the other manufacturers like selling with big numbers, since that will draw in more customers. And 99% of these customers using this SSD for a desktop workload aren't going to be hammering the drive with 4K per kilobyte writes anyway. So basically they bank on not ever having to replace it since it will last like the three years or five years warranty period anyway. So they can put any number there they want. I guess something can be said for both, but when we're talking a very specific workload, it makes it very hard to compare between SSDs and their given specifications. But since I have a variety of drives running plots for a while already, we can take a look at this ourselves. As it turns out, the internal metrics of the drive are much more honest than the manufacturers, or rather, it knows what kind of writes it's been getting and how that affected the cells. Oh, right, and that's a good point. When running plots on your SSDs, make sure you can configure your system with a rightly aligned partition, file system, and make sure you have trim enabled. And then, as mentioned, the Chia plotter workload will have a very low write amplification factor. To check this per SSD, we can do a sudo smartctl minus a slash dev slash disk slash by ID and then your NVMe drive. I've gathered this data from three types of drives, a Samsung 980 Pro, a Corsair Force MP510 960 gigabytes, and a Transcend 240S 1 terabyte. Don't get that last drive. It's horribly slow. I have it aggregated into a little Excel file over here, and looking at that and comparing stated TBW values versus what the drives have written and what they are telling us with the amount of life burned up, we see a completely different picture than you'd expect from the manufacturer numbers. Both the 600 terabytes written type drives seem to allow for much, much more writes before lifetime officially runs out. So now all those drives are much more equal than you'd expect. Yes, the 1700 terabyte written drive still looks like it can write a few more plots, but the difference is much, much less than you'd expect. All numbers are also still pretty much in the beginning of their lifetime, and it also depends where on the percentage it is. If it just rolled over a percent, that has a huge impact on the cal calculations. And well, as I've been hinting at, that actually kind of makes sense. As said, they all use TLC memory. So unless a manufacturer puts three times the amount of chips on the drive, which they won't, that, that will cost way too much, they should all perform relatively the same, giving the same workload. And sure, controller and firmware efficiency can influence that a little bit, but not by that much. So then, with all that, I believe I can wholeheartedly recommend the Samsung 970 Pro 1TB as the prime choice for your NVMe plotting drive, especially because that has MLC memory, which will last, last longer than TLC anyway, and the Samsung 980 Pro 1TB as a closed second drive, or maybe a shared first, because they seem to have dropped in price recently, making them very attractive. Whatever the case, they will plot a heck of a lot faster than those recommended MP600 drives. And as the numbers show, they really won't burn up that much faster than the numbers on the box would suggest. As said, with a 5900X, this can be the difference between doing 20 plots a day or 45. 
in a week of plotting that's 140 plots versus 315. So even if their lifespan would be slightly shorter, I think it's still worth the investment to get that kind of speed boost. And actually, I'd be willing to bet that the Samsung 980 Pro 1TB drives I have will outlast that horrible Transcend 240S for instance. Although it's 600TB written versus 1700TB written on the box, I believe the 980 Pro 1TB will handle more writes in the end. Not sure if I'll ever reach that though, because the Transcend 240S drives are so slow, and once they get close to their end, I'll have finished plotting on the other drives already, because they are just so much faster. Regarding the speed, I believe the biggest difference between these NVMe drives is internal memory channels and controller firmware optimizations. If the controller has 8-channel access to the NAND cells, it will perform a whole of a lot better than 4-channel drives, especially once you've burned through all the caches. But that's probably going into it a little bit too deep. Well, there you have it. My down-to-earth analysis of which consumer NVMe drives are going to be really good for Chia plotting. And they're probably different than you thought when starting this video. As I mentioned in the beginning, all parts of a plotting box need to be in balance. If you buy a really fast 12-core CPU, pairing it with a, in the end, slow SSD won't make it perform like you were expecting. Personally, I recommend having four times one terabyte SSDs, in my case in RAID 0, and I believe that is what is needed to feed a modern Ryzen 9 5900X or 5950X to hit 40 to 50 plots a day out of that box. Most X570 motherboards, however, only have two times M.2 slots, but I've been using these uh, Sabrent PCIe to M.2 plug-in cards, which work excellently and pass through the full times four Gen 4 PCIe lanes to the 980 Pro drive NVMe drives, allowing me to run four in total in a single box. Here you can see it running exactly like that in one of my plotting boxes. I know this video <laughs> is already very long, but there's one last thing I need to mention, and that is to tell you to get some heat sinks for your NVMe drives. They need it if they are going to be constantly hammered like we're going to do. If you listened to me in the previous video, a heatsink on there with a bit of airflow, there's that airflow again, will keep the drives performing at their best speed 24 hours a day. Oh, and when applying a heatsink, no need to remove that sticker from the drive, just so you know. Right, as always, I'll have all components listed in the video description, and if you do decide to use some of those links, maybe get a drive, maybe get an NVMe drive or a hard disk, whatever, those are affiliate links and that helps me out. So thank you very much. And well, I hope this information helps you designing a better plotter box or making better purchasing decisions. It doesn't necessarily have to cost more, just better suited for its task. Let me know down in the comments what you think, because I know this is controversial, but maybe I'm f completely wrong. And let me know in the comments what you think. I'm just gonna say it again. I hope to see you back in the next video. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.